In a previous video, I modified a Sonoff SC environmental monitor device, um, which uh, currently monitors things like dust and noise and uh, temperature and humidity. Um, I added um, an RGB uh, light ring to it in a previous video um, and updated its firmware. Um, in this video, I am going to prepare a microwave motion detector, which is eventually going to go inside the same device. Um, the microwave motion detector in, in, uh, that I'm going to be talking about is the XYCWBDC um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of modifications to it. One to make it a little bit more reliable in its um, uh, eventual destination and then another one which is going to adjust its range. So the first thing we're going to do in preparation for the modification is just do one or two little tweaks to the microwave sensor. This device here, the XYCWBD. See, I bought this a little while ago. There's several of these types of devices available. You can get them in the usual places like eBay and your favourite Chinese vendors. Um, they do pretty much a very similar job to PIR sensors, um, but uh, reputedly, and I haven't tried this yet, um, they're a bit more sensitive than PIR sensors. Um, and um, they can be hidden inside things because they can see through um, even uh, sheets of wood, etc. Um, so I'm going to get this one ready before the, the couple of modifications that I'm going to do to it. Um, the first thing is, um, if you look on the back of it here, there's a little resistor. I don't know if I can get this into focus. Um, it comes fitted with a resistor um, and it gives it a range of about 7 metres. Um, I don't have any rooms in my house that are 7 metres in size. So what I'm going to do is replace this resistor here uh, with... Um, a variable resistor, I'm going to use a variable resistor that will give me anything between uh, basically 0 and 100k. Um, that means I'll be able to adjust the sensitivity of the device. Um, the other thing that I'm going to add to it, um, some people who have used these in circuits which contain ESP8266s um, have problems with false positives. They have problems with the device um, detecting motion when it doesn't really exist. Um, and the reason why they have this false positive is that the ESP8266, of which there is one in the Sonoff device, um, when it transmits um, to the, its Wi-Fi, um, it often leaves kind of power spikes and things which can cause some, some uh, strange artifacts and cause these sensors to, to misreport. So what I'm going to be doing to it is I'm going to be adding a, a basic RC filter. Um, an RC filter basically uses a resistor and a a capacitor. The resistors in the series with the uh, power coming in and the capacitor um, uh, straddles between the ground and the power coming in. Um, this will just mean that if there's any sort of spikes or anything like that coming through the line, it'll filter them out and hopefully give a, a cleaner um, power supply to the sensor so that hopefully I don't get any false positives. So um, in a moment or two I'm going to um, do these modifications. I'm just going to set up for the first modification which will be the RC filter. Okay, so I've set the um, microwave sensor up on the device. Um, I did something uh, off camera because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it in front of the camera here. But if you have a look on the power pin, which is the one on the far right hand side, um, what I did there was I used a pair of snips. I just cut the uh, pin um, going into, coming from the, the kind of uh, socket that's there. Um, and I actually, I, I pulled the pin out and turned it round 180 degrees so that the pin's now pointing up the way. Um, that basically means that when I plug something into this um, a plug here, um, it's the power is currently not connected. So the first thing that I'm going to solder in, hopefully you can see, is this resistor. Um, I didn't have the 330 ohm value that um, I saw other people using on the internet, but I've got a 470 and, and that'll change it, filter it, or it's a little bit larger than I perhaps would have liked. Um, but that's what I'm going to solder in. So um, just being careful about the polarity, this one's marked with a nice minus down one side. I'm just going to pop the capacitor into place, like so. Um, and then I'm just going to try and get in with the solder now. And see if I can't get that soldered into place. Put 
the positive side now in place. I wish I was ambidextrous. I'm now going to try and get the negative side in place. I'll just check that. And yeah, I don't know if you can see, it's not the tidiest of jobs, never is when I'm working, but both legs of the capacitor are now in place. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop a little bit of solder onto that pin, like so. And I've got a resistor here. The resistor is a 10 ohm resistor. So if I just hold that in place there. Solder might be better. That's ideal. I'll just sort of manhandle this into position. And that does seem to be more or less in place. So hopefully I can show you this, if it will, the camera will focus in. So as I say, the resistor is now sitting in series. So the power is going to come in via the power pin. It's going to go through that resistor, which then joins up on the underside with the what used to be, or the remainder of that pin. Um, the capacitor is positive side to the power in, negative side goes to the middle pin which is ground and uh, these are just tied together and uh, yep it's quite a fiddly job but hopefully if you can see that should now give me some filtering on the power line. So that's my first of my modifications. So the second thing that I'm going to do with um, 
this particular board is I'm going to change over the resistor that sets the range. I'm going to try by putting in a variable resistor. Um, I'm first of all going to um, solder this in and then I'm going to hot glue it. Starting off with the solder, um, first things first, just going to remove the resistor which is in place. It's just this little surface mount job here. And just to get that out, I'm just going to put a wee bit of solder on my iron. And off it goes. So I'll offer up I'll just give that a little bit more fresh solder, I think, just to make sure it's absolutely in place. I don't know if you can see, but before I, I started doing this, I think it's probably more of a precaution, but I've added a little slice of Captain Tape just along the edge there. There's a couple of exposed pads which are part of the ground layer, and I didn't want to risk... accidentally shorting um, this part of the circuit to ground. So I just put that captain tape over it. I don't think that these leads would have actually touched it, so I suspect I yeah, didn't really need to do it. But that's my um, resistor attached. What I'm now going to do is um, a little bit of testing with this device. Um, I've made an Arduino sketch and I'm just going to use the Arduino sketch to double check the range and make sure that everything's working properly. I'll also add a bit of glue uh, probably some hot snot just to secure everything in place and make sure that that's going nowhere. So what I'm going to do now is upload a, a quick sketch onto the Arduino. Um, this sketch is going to help me test the microwave motion detector and also set its range. Uh, I will pop this sketch onto my GitHub account in case anybody wants to download it uh, if you're doing the same um, modification yourself. Um, let me just show you, I'm using uh, Visual Studio to write this, uh, although there's there's no reason at all why it couldn't be written in the Arduino IDE itself. Um, the sketch, what it does, um, it basically monitors pin D2, which I've connected the output from the microwave motion detector to. Um, and when it, it um, detects that D2 has gone high, it is going to set the LED pin, which is pin 13, and that's going to be set high uh, on the Arduino. Um, as well as being able to see the LED on the Arduino board, I'm, I'm also going to attach a buzzer to that, or I have attached a buzzer to that, so that I get an audible sound. This is so that I can test from um, another room um, to make sure that the detector isn't picking me up when I'm, say, in the, the room next door or when I'm walking past the, the front door or the door to this, the room that the, um, the machine is going to be in. Um, so... It has the LED pins um, a 13. Um, I then have a couple of variables, one which monitors the state and one of them which gives me a quick count of how many times it's been triggered. Um, we then set up um, the Arduino sketch. So I set the LED pin to an output. I attach an interrupt here, interrupt zero, which is attached, uh, attached to pin D2 of the Arduino. Um, an interrupt just means that um, when it goes high, it will break the program and, and go immediately to um, to uh, do something. Um, I've called my uh, interrupt routine the handler. Um, I've also used a serial port here, um, just so that I, I can also detect using the serial port and, and count how many times um, things have been interrupted. So the void loop is the the loop itself has nothing going on in it whatsoever. Um, everything is done inside this, this handler routine. So um, I've set a function called handler. Um, it reads the state of the pin. If the pin's high, it turns the LED on, it adds one to the motion count, and it prints something to the serial bus. Um, if the sensor is set low, then um, it will set the LED low. And the interrupt that I've set on this interrupts on any change on the D2 pin. So I'm just going to upload that.
and um, then we'll attach the microwave sensor and see how it goes. So here you can see my testing rig. Um, I've used an Arduino clone, this one's called the Funduino Uno. Um, I particularly like this board um, because not only does it have the standard Arduino pin connectors, um, but it also has um, a series of, of um, male headers which give you multiple voltage and grounds um, and um, pin connectors. So it means that you can you can choose, you could use male and female jumpers and it's generally a better board. Um, the other reason I like this board is it's able to swap from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. So if you're testing um, your Arduino with uh, lower voltage devices, um, you don't need to do any kind of um, uh, voltage conversion uh, or signal conversion. So here's the test setup. Here's the um, microwave sensor itself. You see here that I've um, modified the um, cables that came with it uh, just to add some standard jumper cables to it. I've also added, and you can hear it chirping away um, merrily, this um, simple buzzer. Um, it's a DC buzzer. Um, I just put some masking tape across the top of it because these things are really, really loud um, otherwise. Um, so the masking tape just kind of keeps it down to a, a, a small noise, um, just loud enough for me to hear, but not loud enough to annoy the rest of my family. So I've already played with this um, and I've already kind of um, played around with the um, settings of it. What I found inside my room, which is it's about four meters by three meters in size, was um, that the standard 12 kilo ohms um, resistor setting that was, was on the device when I got it, um, it was being detected in other parts of the house. So when you were in the corridor outside this um, particular room, it was already setting off the microwave sensor. I uh, tuned it up and down. I, I tuned it up first of all to 100k, um, and at 100k I found that it wasn't detecting reliably inside the room. Um, so um, basically I just kept lowering the resistance by turning this, this um, little screw here. Um, this pot is, is overkill for this particular application. It's a 25 turn precision pot, um, which means that you have to turn this um, set screw quite a lot before you get it down um, or before you make a significant change to the resistance. Um, by the time I'd got something which was working fairly reliably um, inside this room, um, I measured it in circuit and um, basically I was getting about 65 um, kilo ohms uh, seemed to give me about the, the optimum setting. The beauty of having a variable resistor here is that if, once I get it into the um, Sonoff SC that it's eventually destined for, if I find that it's not sensitive enough, I can go back, reopen the device and, and change this setting. If it's uh, giving me too many false positives, I can uh, detune it slightly and, and give it slightly less range until um, it's given me um, something practical. So I'm very happy so far. The only thing really that hasn't been tested is the, um, the RC filter, which has been added to the power line. Um, this device was working fine enough with an Arduino uh, on its own. So um, the RC filter I've added because eventually there will be an ESP8266 in this circuit, which um, are known to cause problems with these types of devices. Um, so um, I really won't have anything to test other than if it works fine, then I can consider that the RC filter is at least um, doing its job, uh, even if it's not required. So that um, is uh, this particular part of the modification finished. I'm going to upload this one and then um, uh, record a new video where I'll actually fit this inside the sawn off case and upload some firmware for it.